All right, next up here is the uh, <clears throat> PPC housing. I think we are going to go with a kind of a medium gray, dark to medium gray color. Um, just to break up the, the model, just, just a lot of blue, and it's nice to have a little bit of accent. So we're going to go with an ash gray, kind of a medium gray to start. Two, two little blobs of that, and then I've got an off-white, whatever you prefer to, uh, to brighten your gray with. Again, you can do this. Vallejo, Games Workshop, War Colors, Scale 75, they're all <clears throat> great. So I'm going to mix this gray a little bit here. Um, a little bit darker gray probably wouldn't be a terrible, terrible place to start, but I'd like to get into the metallics as well. Also. So I've got my just my number two again here, with a nice point on it. You guys can see, okay. Be nice to get the light light down a little bit closer, maybe. There we go. <clears throat> all right, so we're gonna soon do an all over. I think this whole whole assembly, in my mind, they probably would be manufacturing these, um, like the pistol style PPCs that like a. A Phoenix Hawk or a Stinger or something would use manufacturing them on their facility or whatever manufacturing world they're they're operating, and then they'd be shipping them out to the different different units that require them. So it makes makes sense in my mind that you'd be able to just pull a PPC out of a shipping crate or a container, you know. Or pieces of it and then assemble it on the floor of your hangar or something. It wouldn't necessarily have to be the same same color as your as your neck. And again we're gonna be doing a black oil wash after we're done the metallics, so we don't need to worry too much about uh Our uh, recess is being really, really dark right now. I could paint it gray. I could wash it with a black wash, uh, which is what I would normally do maybe if it was uh, a component of a larger piece like this. But since we're going to be coming in with that oil wash, I'll just do kind of a nice, uh, nice quick transition from this gray up a little higher, a little, little lighter in some areas. And some edge highlights, and then we'll worry about... Uh, using the black oil wash later to get some contrast into the bottom. <clears throat> I think that looks fine. It almost be nice to have a kind of a black handle here instead instead of all gray. Actually this doesn't look terribly good. Sometimes yeah like I was saying saying last time you can just start doing something. You'll have a plan in mind, but then as it uh, as you're going through that plan, it might change on the fly a little bit. And I'd I'd like to show uh, show as well as explain the process of how I'm thinking about things and how I'm tackling things instead of just showing you kind of slides or clips of each step done and that way when you're painting yourself at home you know that if you're thinking things in a similar way you're not alone out there and it's okay to be a little sloppy around the barrel because when we do metallics we're gonna fix that all right A fairly, fairly nice solid gray. So we'll just grab a little bit of lamia medium down there. 
<clears throat> introduce some white into our gray. Yeah, for whatever reason, a AK Interactive Paint, it has this like top layer to it. Whereas like a Vallejo or other paints that I'm used to using, you know, if you if you stick your stick your brush into a puddle of paint in your wet palette, it's gonna uh, it's all gonna behave the same viscosity. But AK Interactive tends to have this like <laughs> almost a less like kind of like a wave kind of motion where the top layer is thinner than the bottom. Okay, so now we're gonna try and highlight. I think we'll go towards towards us. Establish the highlights kind of coming forward. Brighter on the front. Maybe we'll mix it. Well, maybe we'll mix it a little bit thicker here. It's kind of a slow, uh, slow process there. Hmm. Uh, it's definitely thicker, but it's a little bit less fine when it comes to a gradual highlight. So the thicker your thicker your paint is, the easier it's going to cover. But you're going to get a very clear, defined line where you where you applied it. Whereas the thinner it is, if you're more of a glazing it on, it's going to be harder to distinguish where it's uh, where it's actually starting from. But it looks a lot smoother. And then on the sides as well over here. Let's make sure it's in frame for you. And again, I'm working my colors kind of toward the, the front of the, the weapon. So doing a full pass around, making sure I've gotten all the matching symmetrical edges. And I believe Lamy Medium is mostly just a, it's basically like paint without pigment in it, so you can use it to stretch out your existing solid paint and glaze with it. So you're effectively having something that's got less, less pigment or less pigment intensity. If you spread it out over surface, it's not going to immediately color change the color. Uh, I still want to have some definition in here for the. There you go.
<clears throat> so I think that looks fine for getting a little bit of a gray, a gray established on it. Uh, I'd like to leave some parts kind of darker. Um, we'll do one of you one kind of final layer of a highlight moving towards the front, and then we'll just do some quick edge highlights to <clears throat> tie it all together. It's a little odd to talk to yourself when you're not used to talking when you do something. Usually it's just loud music and open windows. And it's definitely worthwhile to see something through. So if you start doing something and you're feeling like you're not really happy with the direction that it's going at stage, you know, one or two or even three, it's usually worthwhile to carry it all the way through all your steps and then see what it looks like at the end. Because a lot of times it's just, there'll be a defining step or two that really makes the difference in having something look what you're envisioning or, or you know, just interesting compared to being really flat and boring. The early steps or stages don't seem very exciting, but they build the foundation for for what you want to do later on or how it's gonna how it's gonna finish. Alright, okay, I'm just gonna clean that brush off because we're not using it anymore. Um, I like to use this uh, Master's brush cleaner. <clears throat> I was just I checked to make sure that there's no paint back in the, the ferrule area. It should only make its way, you know, half or two thirds of the way up the brush at most if you're being a little messy. And if you do get it back up in there, you can uh, take an old brush. So this one's clean, but take an old brush. Um, I like to get them both soaked up a little bit and then some water. And then I'll kind of just agitate the bristles where it meets the ferrule if I see paint built up on those. And then agitate them a little and then kind of brush it out this way. And it should break up and come out nicely. Um, that'll just keep your brushes in a good shape a lot longer. So then I just kind of, in like a twisting motion, pull back my paper towel, reform it with a point. There you go. It's ready to sit back on the rack. It'll dry like that. And it'll uh, maintain its sharp edge nicely. Okay, I'm going to grab my triple zero. We will once again bring up the <clears throat> the highlights a little bit with some more white. Uh, maybe that might be that might be too bright. We'll see. Okay, and so I'll flip them this way. We'll do the all of the the vertical top to bottom edges. And again, I'm just using the edge of my brush. It's it's on the it looks like it's on the tip, but it's still the flat edge of my brush. So I was just gonna double check, look at the big screen, and see where uh, what you guys are looking at. Side vertical. And I'm not too concerned about doing the bottom. 
the bottoms of the panels. Oh, it's completely out of there, out of sight. Okay. Oh, it's tough. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Turn it to my head, can see it, and you guys can't. Just nice, nice thin lines. So it's not not as smooth as the the airbrush blue, but I feel like it breaks it up nicely. There you go. So yeah, it's still a still a gray though. I didn't want to go all the way up to, to white, I think that would stand out too much, but... Nice. Okay, so next we'll do the uh, the metallics. Do metals all around, give it a wash, re-highlight the metallics, and then we're uh, looking home stretch there. See you soon.